The Koi Gig Pod on OTB Sports in association with Cadbury. A player and a half deserves a glass and a half of support. Top pocket goal! It's what dreams are made of. They are going to the World Cup Finals! Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Koi Gig Podcast. I'm Kathleen McNamee and I am joined as ever by former Ireland internationals Emma Byrne and Karen Duggan. But we also have a special guest on this week's show uh, who very kindly just got straight off the plane and came straight on. So we are very, very grateful to the one and only Vicky Lasada, who's just wrapped up her season this week uh, with maybe a bit of a disappointing result for you guys. But she's going to help us go through the Champions League final at the weekend as someone who has been there, done it, and knows exactly how happy Barcelona are feeling right now. Vicky, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Now it's my pleasure. <laughs> um, I know you're in high demand this weekend, obviously, with the sort of experience that you have. So we do really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, I suppose just to for all of us to go straight into the final, look back at it, it was uh, the first half was unbelievable almost it just felt like complete deja vu emma what were you thinking when that first goal went in and it was only three minutes on the clock barely three minutes on the clock Um, i wasn't shook at all i was like this is no problem in in actual fact i was delighted wolfsburg scored first because i thought it's going to be a bit of a washout to be honest i predicted a bit of a washout so i was very happy that they scored first when they scored the second goal I was a little bit worried <laughs> and I said it in commentary I was like if Barca go in here 2 nil down they're I think they'll struggle against a German side like Wolfsburg but um yeah so I was I was definitely worried at half time but I wasn't worried I was glad about the first goal because I knew that would kind of wind Barca up and then we'd see the true Barca um so yeah a little bit worried when it got later on in the game though <laughs> and Vicky for you like that slow start from Barcelona we've seen them have it before and not being able to get back into the match especially in those big finals what do you think has changed I suppose mentally for the squad that this season they were able to put those demons behind them and come back I mean I wasn't sure when I saw uh, Mariona was playing on top uh, which I knew Um, I wasn't sure if that was going to work well because you know I think with um Wolfsburg is better if you keep the centre backs as low as you can because then you have more space to go through to get to Pano's goal. And then after the quick goal, I was everybody was thinking, oh my god, it's gonna be again like Olympic de Leon. But I think they did really well. I the first half wasn't good. Uh, I think Barca wasn't intense enough. They were losing easy passes that we're not used to see from them. But very surprised how they turn it around. And actually, the second half was uh, really good to enjoy, also to watch. Yeah, there was some skill on display in the second mm-hmm. half, like in the way that Barcelona were able to just turn things around so easy. And obviously, at the center, that was Gajaro and her goals. What is it that makes her so good? Because I think sometimes she's slightly underrated, even or like people don't appreciate and say how good she is. Because she is amazing. Patrick Guijarro. Yeah. She, I, I mean, um, now I can say I was wrong because uh, I say seven years ago, I said that the first Ballon d'Or Spanish was going to be her. I know it's very hard because Barca is an amazing team. So, of course, Alexia, Aitana, uh, um, Patrick, all of them are really good. Mapi Leon, they're really good players. But Patrick does that job that probably is not, nice to watch people don't see it it's a bit um we would say the bad job but when you're playing in the team with her you know that she is beside you because she's just amazing and i'm actually so happy because i'm a bit disappointed because nowadays if you score and you assist it seems like you've done amazing and sometimes it's not just about that Mm. and emma this barcelona team it feels like this win made uh, that made them a lot happier possibly than a lot of the other stuff they've achieved just because of everything that has come beforehand yeah yeah I think I mean they had to work for it didn't they when when they beat Chelsea 4-1 it was an absolute demolition and it was right from the start I mean they scored their goals in the first half so it was kind of 
second half was kind of null and void. This time they had to work for it and they had to show, you know, something that they don't normally have to do. I think they've only had to come back once in the whole season. I think mm. it was Sevilla they had to come back from. Um, so they don't normally have to do it. So again, it's something they're not used to doing. They're used to gliding through games, not even sweating, walking through games. And um, and this time it was a test for them. So they had to earn it. And, you know, it comes, you do get tired of winning. People say, oh, you never get tired. You do. You get tired of winning. You get tired of winning easily. You actually want competition in the end. You want to have to work for it. And that's what exactly what they did. And you could see how they were celebrating. They had to show a lot of character. Um, I, I guarantee you there were some people in that dressing room who thought we might not come back from this because of what happened against Leon. But, you know, luckily for them, there were mistakes from Wolfsburg, the poor defending from Wolfsburg. And then, of course, Patry moving higher up on the pitch was a massive thing. I think if it came from Heraldis, I, I've been reading a lot that Alexia was talking a lot at halftime, so maybe it came from her. But you have to give credit to the manager if he did make that change because it really worked. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I had to follow along because um, I had my own match, but I was following it on Twitter and everyone was like, this isn't the Barcelona we're used to seeing and all this in the first half. But then I looked back at the stats and their pass accuracy was still like high 80s and like nearly double the amount of passes. They they didn't break through in the first half, but there were glimpses that they could still come come back from it. It was just the kind of fear that it is a German Wolfsburg team that can just shut up shop, but then they made uncharacteristic mistakes. So it was a really good final because, like I say, I think we all expected Barcelona to just walk. Yeah. It. And right. another thing is when they played Wolfsburg in the semi finals in San Sebastian, they were all over them. They completely dominated the game and they were missing so many chances. It was just a horrific game for them. And that's what would have been in the back of my mind if I were them the Wolfsburg game because they were missing loads of easy not easy chances but loads of chances in the first half that they could have been three nil up in the first half easily and no they were easy chances they were 100 percent easy chances you would have scored them right you would have you would have oh, of course them. I would have <laughs> <laughs> now give me more context to that because Vicky's obviously where a class would I have scored them well, I was actually thinking about you when Vicky was talking about the dirty work in the team. <laughs> I was like, Clara knows all about that job. I think and they called it donkey work when I was playing. Well, look who got you, your captain of the team. Another great win at the weekend as well. Sorry, I forgot to congratulate you at the top of the show, as I often do. Very comprehensive win for P Mount at the weekend. Um, I saw the say I presume that's the article that was talking about the Alexia at halftime made like a big speech in the dressing room and basically told everyone to you know get their stuff oh, together and themselves on. <laughs> <laughs> Biggie, what like I suppose it, when you're in the dressing room and you're having that sort of conversation, like what what's she telling those Barcelona players or what's what's the atmosphere like? I mean, um. It's, I mean, it's just amazing because Barca is special and that group of players are very special because they've been playing together for a long time and they know they are ready, they know they are the best, but then it, it, you have to play the game. And in the halftime, they were losing to nil and they were thinking, this is going to be like Olympic, are we going to be able to do it or no? And you just need someone like Alexia because uh, she's a massive impact for all the girls. And I think she just said, if there is one just one team in the world that can uh, change this result is us. So just let's go out and do it. And I actually think the first half they were waiting a little bit when they are amazing players. I don't know why they were waiting for for Wolfsburg. I don't know what, what, what were they expecting from them, but they just needed to go for the game. And even though they had so many chances, but it just Barca hasn't been very effective lately. Mm. No, they they haven't played. I don't think they've played their best all season. Just watching them, but what I was disappointed was the pressing in the first half. They're mm -hmm. usually so good at that. They're so efficient at the pressing, and actually Wolfsburg were pressing better than them. So I think that really helped as well. That changed in the second half, and that was a massive. Yeah, it was surprising because you know Wolfsburg do have some defensive frailties. We would have seen that against Arsenal, so you would have thought get in their faces and put them on the back foot, but. It wasn't the case. I suppose it was just a really nervy start. Like you don't expect Lucy Brown mm -hmm. to make a mistake like that that early on either. But it was, came from a really good press from Wolfsburg. 
yeah, and she did quite well to like well, I suppose you expected of a player of her caliber to kind of recover and be able to come back out again. Um you say that like you don't think Barcelona have been playing at their best. And like we've seen it say like they've lost their first game in two years recently <laughs> enough. And then that's the thing though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. They're, gone, but, they're done. <laughs> but do you think it's that it partly that thing of what you were saying of like maybe a tiredness of winning? And like I'm sure loads of people in that dressing room. I would say like absolutely not we you know we enjoy winning as much as we do did before but that it's just a kind of natural consequence of being at the top and being challenged only on like say rare occasions like the final I mean I I personally I think they were trying to be too individual at times this season um you know they've great individual players and they were nearly trying too hard individually rather than working as a team like I remember Barca even in the Champions League last year against Leon, even though they lost they were popping the ball around like I'd be getting texts from people back in there and going oh my god this this team is just incredible like everybody should be watching this team and you know they brought in players great players but they just I don't know, it just didn't seem to click as well as it used to. And and of course, that takes a little bit of time. But I think in the second half, you've seen more of that. I also think Wolfsburg did a very good job in, you know, marking individual players. They stopped Rolfo getting forward because John Stottier was, she was defending the whole game. Like she was very rarely attacking. So she was stopping that threat. And then they packed up the middle. So they weren't, Bars were struggling with that. And then of course, Graham Hansen is their go-to player, but they I think they gave the ball to her maybe four times in the first half. So just mm. like little things they needed to change for the second half, which they did. Two goals came from the right hand side, one from Caroline Graham Hansen, and one from Itana getting wide. Um so yes, yeah, I just think they needed to recognize they need to get the ball wide and move the ball quicker, basically. Yeah, I do think as well there's a slight underestimation of like some of the caliber of players that Wolfsburg have you know you look at say like Alex Pop, Power, Oberdorf one of the best young players in the world they do have it it's just they haven't been the behemoth that they have been in previous years in Europe and I think because of that it's it was easy to go into the game and look at the two squads and be like oh Barcelona are definitely gonna run away with this um one of the names you mentioned there was Aitana Bonnati and she was named uh, Champions League player of this season Vicky what makes a player like her so good and like playing alongside her how so how does she make the team flow I mean Aitana she apart from she's a hard worker she works a lot also not just when when they have training uh, also her free time she thinks about just football and her performance because she's very 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 competitive and she has talent so when you mix all that it's a perfect combination also i think she's growing now she's more mature and she's kind of taking a bit that leadership maybe missing uh, alexia uh, being a midfielder for barca it's uh, the most important position for them and I think she's been very, like, very stable with her performances. And in the end, is what she got that that uh, award. Um, I mean, I think she's she's very young, so still so many years to <laughs> to watch her playing football. It's a terrifying thing when you look at like the age of some of those Barcelona players. Like a lot of them still have so many years <laughs> of football in them, and you're like, how long? Are yeah, they- and I feel old. Actually, because I remember oh. Alexia, I Alexia, Aitana coming. So Aitana always says that the first player that she was looking at was me. So it's funny because now I'm talking about her and she's just amazing. And I remember her coming from the Barca B, the development team. And it was always so proper fighter and always talking so much, getting upset. And I was like, this girl has personality. She's going to get to the top 100%. And also, I think you need that also a bit of personality, you know, big team, big players, and she never hides. Yeah, no, that's so funny that she says that to you, that you were there at the very start. That's the thing as well, like you've seen this Barcelona team go through from like when it was relegated all the way to like getting back up into the main league and obviously winning that first Champions League trophy and how like a much of a massive moment that was. 
for this team, like how, what's the motivation now? Because obviously they wanted to get the demon off its back of Leon and what happened there. And like playing a game like the weekend where they went down, were able to like come back and mentally say to themselves, okay, yes, we're strong. They've won everything in Spain. How do you keep like motivating a team like that? I mean, they are winners. They're showing it and they want to keep winning. But I say Spain probably is not a motivation for them now because I'd be lying if I don't say it. Probably, I guess, uh, Olympique de Lyon, how many times they've won the Champions League. Probably they'll be thinking, I want to win the Champions League every single year. But it's very hard. Look what happened last year. But also for me, the way we won in 2021, I say they want to get back to that performance knowing them. And I say they try hard. I think the national team doesn't help either, but that's another thing. <laughs> that's another show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Well, even the players that are playing for Barcelona at the moment and they're coming out talking about the Spanish team, it's definitely a, a, another story entirely. Um. So do you think it's, a case for like say some of these players like is, is Barcelona the the dream and the goal and they want to keep doing this with Barcelona or is there a chance that maybe some of them will want to like try different leagues or try you know a, a different challenge or maybe a more I don't want to say more competitive because obviously they are just an incredibly well-oiled machine and they've made themselves into that and that's why they win so much but maybe somewhere where there are some three or four teams that are a bit closer to the top mm. I mean, I'm sure there is some players that want to stay there um, probably their whole career. But I also would say there is some players that want to try uh, in another league because that's normal. And I think we're very lucky because uh, we play football and you get the chance to go to another countries. And now the women's football is uh, professional everywhere or in more countries. And I think the German league, the WSL is the best league that we have right now. I say we will see maybe soon some players uh, leave in the Spanish league because uh, as I said, I don't think it's a big motivation for them. Mm. I mean, like, Karen, you look like you had a thought there. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to leave. The weather is great. <laughs> the best team in the world. Wouldn't, I don't see why you'd want to leave. Come ever. to England. <laughs> yeah, it's freezing. <laughs> No, so it's it's not not better in Manchester, I heard. Imagine you like four or five of them came, went to England. That would be so interesting to see yeah. how they would get on. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've tried to convince a couple of them to go. <laughs> and at the time they were like, oh, maybe. But like literally then they'd sign another five year. I'd be like, we were just talking about this last night. <laughs> so obviously they're not listening to me. But. I mean, nobody really leaves Barca, do they? Apart from you, Vicky and Lika and that. Um, it's very difficult to leave a club like that. I mean, it's such an amazing club. But there are other, you know, motivations. There are other challenges. And I would, personally, I would love to see a couple of them in the WSL. Just to see if they would dominate as much as they do. Um, would that be like at Chelsea or still like what team do you think some of those players would best fit into I mean they'd have to go to a football playing team they just they would just have to I mean they would not know what hit them if they went to a like route one style club um no they'd have to go to a top football and playing team absolutely I mean if you look at the Americans not many of the Americans survived outside of of the league in America. I mean, it's difficult. It's really, really difficult. So I would just like to see it. I'd like to see it personally. Well, I think the ones, like, especially with the Americans, the ones that do well, so say like your Cat Macarios and stuff, they're the ones that go, rather than going straight into like the college draft or going straight into the NWSL system, they like take a couple of years and then come over to Europe and they play here for a while. Like that tends to be, when those players are most successful, I think. And even if you look at the, say, Alex Morgans and the ones who did come over and played in France and stuff, they're, they're outliers probably just because of the quality of player that they are rather than anything else. Yeah, I mean, Haran does really well, obviously. And there are, obviously, there are players that do really well, but the more physical 
players um the holding midfielders and yeah I mean it, it takes a certain type of player to play in especially the WSL I mean Vicky will tell you the difference of playing in Spain and then coming to the WSL that's she is the perfect person to talk to about that no yeah <laughs> no no yeah no I, it's actually you're right Emma because I think uh, I think it's really hard it's completely different because the English league is is uh, is very physical and is way quicker than the Spanish, and it's true that all these players that play for Barca, uh, they know each other very well and they've been working with the same style and same basics for years and years. But I can say for me, the new experiences it was about to challenging me, but it was completely different. It was really hard to adapt to some teams because I was just always looking for someone that I could understand playing football, and sometimes that doesn't happen. So you kind of have to be a bit more individuals and, and knowing that if you have one or two chances, you have to show yourself apart from helping the team, but in the end you have to do something that is going to show that you are a good player. And that doesn't happen often in the English league because everything, it just happens uh, very quick. Mm. You just see, you just see the numbers on the back of the shirt when you get on the ball, <laughs> everybody just runs forward. Yeah. <laughs> Which... We should give a mention to Katie McCabe, obviously making the Champions League yeah. team of the season. Any chance we get to give her a shout out, obviously coming from the WSL, but more importantly from Ireland. Oh, way more importantly. Yeah. <laughs> Flying the flag there as a left back. As a left back. Yes. <laughs> and the other defenders were, I know, dominated by Barcelona players. So again, it's everyone thinks about Barcelona, they think about the free flow in football, but really strong defense as well Mappy it, it, Mappy Leon is the heart of that defense like mm. she made a crunching tackle a couple of crunching tackles and she's so good at reading and covering she covers across that back line and I think if they didn't have her they might be in they might be in a definitely more trouble than, yeah. than we what need a player like that if you're going to encourage your fullbacks to bomb on the way that we see the Barcelona ones like Lucy Bronze is in the box more often than not so um, yeah. it's so important to have a player like that yeah, I remember watching her play last summer and just being like, you know, it's just like really fun to watch someone play if you like concentrate on one particular <laughs> player for an entire game. And I was just, I was sitting with one of my friends and we both did it and we were just like, oh, she's so good. Which is a very great technical uh, analysis of how she plays by me. <laughs> I will take all the money from uh, UEFA for if they ever want to commentate or to talk about them and I'll just randomly scream at different points. Um, Vicky, what was the hardest transition for you you said you know when you're moving from different clubs and obviously you've had quite a lot of different experiences which one was the one that probably you found you had to adjust your football a bit more or was a bit different in my whole career I have a long career, career. <laughs> <laughs> well I was very young when I left uh, Barcelona after so I left Barcelona when I was 24 and I was already a captain and I already won four leagues but this wasn't like no professional football or anything so and going to USA was painful, very painful. The training, the running. Uh, I was just able actually to play 50, 55 minutes. I couldn't make it to the 60, 65 uh, for, the, for the first 25 games. And it just changed me because I was super lazy, a super lazy player. And then, then I went to Arsenal. And I think my best years was back then, my two years at Arsenal. and and in America. And then when I went back to Barca, everybody said, Jesus, you just changed massively physically. You're so quick, you're so strong. Actually, I had to stop myself. I remember Ruth, my center back saying, listen, you're going too much. Just stop, relax, because you're gonna get red card every single game. And I, sadly, I had to adapt because sometimes I regret leaving Arsenal because I think uh, the Spanish league was lower. Mm. And when was it that you felt, I suppose, things at Barcelona maybe caught up to the those other experiences that you had? Because obviously you look at the team now and I'm sure things are not the way they were at, in, in, at the very start. We just, yeah, training. Yeah, it was just so, I mean, I was the only one that left Spain. So I don't know how we 
did it. Like how we built that amazing group of players. I guess it was a lot mentally. And you know, when you have a target and it's just your dream and you do everything. So we were missing everything with our families and we were training. We were asking for more training, every single training session longer. Uh, we used to go uh, to the changing room sometimes after a session and being super upset because training wasn't good enough because you don't win. And I miss that a little bit now because I think the new generations, they just uh, Oh, don't get me started on the new generation. <laughs> we hate that. That's a good show. <laughs> okay. I think it's just different. So I think we were so lucky because in general, that group of players, we wanted to win the Champions League and we did everything we needed to do. And it was just the greatest experience in my life. I And I'm sure it was the same for everyone. I don't think it'd be the same again. I have to say that. <laughs> Well, I think especially when you do something for the first time or you're like, yeah. it, it means something completely different. And like, what is that feeling like of getting the Champions League trophy in your hands and kind of lift, and knowing that like, okay, my entire career has been leading up to one of the, this moment and I'm doing it with Barcelona. Yeah, and it was also, you know, I, I think there was, there were like maybe 14 players from, from Barcelona or you have Patri Mariona, they're from the, the Balearic Islands, but consider Catalan because they've been in the club for seven, eight years. And we couldn't believe it actually because we were like a year before that in in Budapest losing 4-1, getting smashed by Ada Hegerberg and Henry and all them players. And just the way we won, I think it was very special because it also you know, in a moment where women's football is growing and you used to hear things like women can't play football and the way we played them, that Champions League was just amazing, better than some men's uh, teams. Yeah, no, it was an incredible match and an incredible showpiece as well, I think. Like we were just so used to the normal teams dominating. It was great having a team like Barcelona Win it. Mm. Although you can't do a complete run like Leon did and win every single year because then we'll all get sad that more teams yeah. aren't winning. We need Arsenal in there at least once. <laughs> um, pardon, Karen? Nothing. Oh, okay. sorry. I thought you said something when you unmuted yourself. Um, so looking ahead for this Barcelona team, it's very much stay at the top, keep competitive. Hopefully the issues with the national team don't really hurt the main squad too much. But is there is there a point where this team moves? Like, do you think the, the setup in Barcelona is strong enough now that even if some of these players do move on, the culture has been established and the, the winning mentality is through every part that it needs to be? I mean... It... Actually, the team looks um, very mature, but I think Patri is 24, 5, Aitana is 24. So as I said, there's still so many years ahead. And you have players, which is amazing from Barca, is that the difference between the first team and the second team is not that big that as I've seen in other clubs. So you have players like Jana, um, um, uh, Bruna, uh, they're really good players that you know Barca is going to have a good future. For me now, maybe they're missing a good, not a good striker, but a goal scorer, maybe. I think as he said, uh, it hasn't been a good year for her. She was amazing in the years before. But she I think that... a few injuries this year, hasn't yeah. she? Yeah. Mm. I think that would have been like the other day with, with the chances that Barca had against Wolfsburg. You just needed someone that just run properly inside the box and look for the ball and put the ball in the net. And Mariona is not that kind of player. And Jayce, I think she's very good, but she's better without the ball because she gives a lot to the team. She's not that goal scorer either. She's better well, on yeah. the ball as well. That game against England, mm. she was incredible outright. Yeah. Is there any striker out there you think would be that striker for Barcelona? I'd like to see Ada, but I don't think Hegerberg is going to go personally because, I don't know, I don't think she will, she'll go. Maybe Pajor would be a good striker for definitely. Young, and I think it's what Barca needs. She's a goal scorer. She's a machine. Yeah. 
mm. scoring goals. Well, Emma loves a bit of transfers and to be in a little football agent. Oh, yeah, on the case. <laughs> <laughs> Let's set the world on light by saying what everybody else is saying. Like that's pretty much out there already. <laughs> It's all you, Emma. It's not you my my I just, over. I just plucked that out of the air. Like I was, I was having a cup of tea with them, and they let it slip or something. <laughs> <laughs> incredible, incredible stuff. So really. That's you, Irish. That's you. <laughs> yeah, we're gossipers. That's it's you. true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so so <laughs> Oh gosh. Well, I think that's a perfect note to end our chat on. Vicky, thank you so much for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. And I hope you're able to enjoy a bit of downtime uh, now that the season is over. The Koi Gig Podcast on Otri Sports is sponsored by Cabri FC, official stack partner to Republic of Ireland women's national team. Uh on actually to note as well, the national team, the training squad is going to be announced this Friday. So that's going to give us a great insight into what is going to be going on with the team ahead of the World Cup. And we will have plenty of exciting content for you in the build up to the World Cup to get you excited. And um, please do if you have ever any questions or things that you want to get into us, please do. We always love hearing from listeners. Karen and Emma, I hope you have a lovely evening. Thank you very much for joining us always. And I will see you all next week. The Koi Gig Pod on OTB in association with Cadbury, official snack partner of the Republic of Ireland women's national team.